Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. So today we are going to be talking about how I do my homeschool planning for the term. Um, I've already done a video on how I do my homeschool planning for the year and a video about my curriculum choices for this year as part of my homeschool series. Um, I would highly recommend taking a look at those videos. I will have the playlist linked down below. Um, those things will, well, this will make a little bit more sense if you have seen those videos. Um, and I did an intro to the series as well so that I wouldn't have to kind of keep repeating information. But basically, we um, homeschool year round. So we will be starting on September 5th and we will homeschool through August. We do seven weeks on and one week off. Um, we do have some times like around the holidays and then in April where we're taking a two week family vacation where it does throw the seven weeks off a little bit. But for the most part, again, it's seven weeks on and one week off. And then when we get done in August, we have a two week break um, that falls right on CJ's birthday um, that we will be taking off before we start up again in September of next year. So that is how our term runs. Um, so for our first term, it is exactly seven weeks. And what I have done is our curriculum that we use, Easy Peasy, they have some um, scope and sequence printables that are already available on the website. This one is a little bit hard to read, um, but I don't use this one as much because this is for his core subjects, reading, math, and language arts. Um, I don't have to use this because he has workbooks for these subjects and I have a parent's guide, so I will use the parent's guide instead of this scope and sequence. But for his uh, supplemental subjects where he does not have workbooks and I do have to go online, which is Bible, history, science, music, and art, and PE and health, this is extremely helpful because basically from day one through day 180, it tells me exactly what he's going to be doing every single day. So instead of me having to go on the website and read for every single day what is going to be going on, I can just use this sheet right here um, to see what's going on. Um, on a daily basis and I'll talk about this a little bit more when I get into the video about how I plan for the week because that is when this page is going to come in handy. As far as planning for the term, I use these pages um, and I have one for each of the subjects. So I have one for Bible, one for history, one for science, which is actually two pages long. And then I have one for music and one for art. Um, PE and health doesn't have one because he only does PE and health once a week. So it's easy to just take a look at this page here to see what's going on but basically um, again our first term is exactly seven weeks so it's 35 days um, and so I can see from day 1 through 29 we're going to be in the book of Matthew and then from day 30 through 58 so I know going up to day 35 we're going to be getting started in the book of Genesis same thing with history going up to day 35 we're going to be doing an intro to ancient history, then we're going to be in Egypt, Mesopotamia, ancient China, and getting started with the Mayas, and so on and so forth with the other subjects. Um, the good thing is for music and art, music and art normally follow along with history. So whatever time period we're doing in history, um, we'll be studying the music and art of that same culture. Um, so what I do is I look at this, and then what I did was I just took a blank piece of paper, and then I wrote down basically all the information I just told you on one sheet of paper. What books of the Bible will we be doing? What will we be doing for history, science, music, and art? And I went on um, my library's um, card catalog online and just tried to find some reference books um, that we could have at home while we are studying these things. I know that we can um, you know, go online, look at different websites and YouTube videos and um, documentaries and all those different things but sometimes I do like just having physical books at home and so that's what I did is I found just non-fiction books that we could have at home um, that we could use to reference during that time and what I did is I wrote those things down on my resource list for term one and again I, um, I showed this a little bit in my how I plan for the year video but again, this um, again is the Ultimate Homeschool Planner by Deborah Bell that I'm using this year. This resource page, it has six different sections, so it's made for you to be using for six different children um, or up to six different children because I only have one child. It worked out perfectly because we have six different terms this school year. I use one for each term. So here I'm writing down all the nonfiction books. So out of this list, 
um, I chose the ones that I wanted the most so normally I have two maybe three for each of the time periods or whatever and I put them here so these are all the nonfiction resources that we are using if there are any other resources that I come across like if there's a website that I keep going to for something specific I have room to add it um, and then so I have one for every term so that's what I did here this is not um, the books that I like the fiction books or the read alouds that I found that may tie into this um, that's completely different this is just nonfiction resources what I also did for the term planning is on the goals page again this is made for up to six different children so what I did is I used one for each term and this is made for academic goals and character goals um, because we are doing like a character um, development or personal development um, every term for the, our first term we are doing the seven habits of happy kids which is um, like the child version of seven habits of highly effective people my character goals for him is to learn the seven habits so that's all that I put there um, sometimes we may have other personal goals for him to work on I know some people have used this if they have younger kids um, that they want to potty train or if they want to work on goals like um, if their child is still having temper tantrums or having attitude issues and they want to work on that so if we have other character goals that we want him to work on just depending on where he is in life if he's having issues with a particular thing and we want to work on that we will include that as of right now because we are just getting started um, there's not much that we want to work on and I feel like these the seven habits character goals actually will um, they will encompass some of the other personal goals that we want him to work on like we're um, setting up a chore chart and getting into some routines and habits and things like that especially since we just moved into our new apartment just teaching him to be a little more responsible and things like that um, the seven habits kind of help out with a lot of those things so I feel like him learning these seven habits will help out with so many other things so that's all I put there the other thing that I did um, for the reading list, I did not break this down by term. I just kept it as just a running reading list. But for the field trips list, um, again, I don't know why they necessarily broke this up by student. Again, there are six of them and it has student on each one. I don't know why or how as a homeschooler you would take each of your kids on different field trips. I don't know why they did that but it is again I just use one for each term so what I would do here is I would just make a list of um, field trips and ideas that we would like to go on during that term um, these are not specifics these are not the field trips that we did go on these are just ideas um, it doesn't have to be specific again for this first term in the fall I could just put pumpkin patch or hayride or um, going on a farm or a dairy farm or whatever the case may be for this winter time we could go see the festival of lights we could go because it's getting into Christmas time and Advent time we could definitely do a lot of things that have to do with volunteering and stuff like that and having it as a field trip so just general ideas and then as I sit down and plan the field trips for the term then I would go ahead and add it onto the actual calendar pages and schedule it out so that's what I have here um, so those are the main things that I, I've done and then on the calendar itself of course I've marked like the term breaks and, and different things like that so that is the just the basics for the term again I'll be doing a more specific video about how I plan for the week and um, how I use the, the pages more specifically and um, with the weekly planning it's not it's it's not much that's why I only plan a week at a time because in essence as you can see everything is already planned out for me it tells me on this day this is what I'm supposed to do um, so it's just easy it's easy for me to plan a week at a time just in case we get behind or we get ahead um, there's not much to think about so that's basically what I do as far as term planning the main thing is just um, gathering those resources to make sure we have some extra reference books and things like that that is the main thing um, so if you guys have any questions about how I plan for the term leave them below in the comment section again I will have the playlist linked to the previous videos if you have any questions about um, anything that I'm using 
Um, again, the next video that I will do will be how I plan for the week and I'll get into more detail about the scope and sequence and I will pull out some of the parents guides and stuff like that so you guys see that and I will actually plan out the week because when I do that video um, it will be time for me to plan out our first week so I will be getting all that done so again any questions or comments leave them below in the comment section and I will see you guys in the next one